management miscalculated the size of the crowd. As lines lengthened for the home opener, it became clear that the attendance far exceeded estimates. Quickly, the kicks transformed their error into a public relations coup. The gates were open, and those waiting in line were invited in free. On this day, the commissioner of the North American Soccer League, Bill Woosnam, spoke optimistically about the future of the sport. Soccer's had a tremendous growth at all levels in the last few years, and I'm sure it's going to become extremely popular here in Minnesota. Soccer is, of course, the, the most popular sport in the world, and we now feel very confident that within the next decade, this country is going to become, become the hub of the whole sport. We're looking forward to hosting the World Championship, and ultimately, we feel that our clubs are going to be the strong clubs in the world. The players, the correspondents in the soccer affair came mostly from distant lands. They were strangers in a foreign country, playing a game with which Americans were unfamiliar. Nevertheless, record crowds helped create a synergism which made the kicks an instant success. They exhibited a dashing style of soccer which excited both the players and their newly found admirers. The kicks won their division, swept through the first two playoff games, and chased their rainbow all the way to the Kingdom in Seattle, where they would play Toronto for the NASL Championship. In the title game, the kicks, who had beaten Toronto during the regular season, did not lack for opportunities. Minnesota assaulted the Toronto goal with a barrage of shots only to be frustrated by brilliant goalkeeping on the part of the Metro's Zeliko Belecki. It was ironic that Vilecki, who was Toronto's backup goalie, should experience his supreme performance on this day. It was defense which brought Toronto to the soccer bowl, and it was this same defense which bedeviled Minnesota. Eusebio scored for Toronto on a deflected free kick. The kick's Allen West was fouled and presented with a similar opportunity. His attempt was also deflected, but harmlessly aside. From Minnesota's point of view, this unquestionably was the turning point of the game. Trailing one to nothing and desperately in need of momentum, Addy Coker gained control of the ball. An apparent foul against Ace Nesolenkwe went unobserved, and with it went the kick's last gasp. The soccer bowl would be borne off to Toronto by Eusebio, but it would remain as the goal of the Minnesota kicks. Here in the upper Midwest, we have a soundly based, bountiful economy that makes for a good life indeed. It's everywhere to be seen, for individuals and families, and in business as well. The First Bank System banks are dedicated to helping people make the most of what they've got. The 89 First Bank hailed the Minnesota kicks and the new fun and excitement they brought to our region. As the season progressed, a growing legion of fans extended Minnesota's reputation as the tailgating capital of the universe. Among the junior sophisticates, the kicks became the in thing. And if you were at the game, you were chic. Fans loved the fact that Minnesota blossomed into a high scoring unit. But not every shot resulted in a goal.
In soccer, defense is far more subtle than offense. But Kicks fans learn to appreciate the skills of such defenders as number six, Captain Alan Merrick. Number two, Ron Webster, at 33 years of age, was the Kicks senior citizen. Webster brought to the back four a maturity and confidence which helped make the defense an effective unit. The largest of the Minnesota defenders was Steve Litt, number five. At 6'1 and 182 pounds, Litt played a physical game and was rarely outmuscled while battling for the ball. Frank Spragan, number three, thwarted attackers with a tenacious style. Number 17, Simbic, was a collegiate All-American. He was a first-round draft choice who eventually won a starting job. Just 21, Bick represents the new breed of Native American soccer stars. Midfielder Peter Bryan, number four, provided an efficient link between defenders and attackers. Ron Futcher was a forward who displayed the fire and fervor of a defender. Although Futcher's prime responsibility was scoring, he refused to be intimidated and merited his reputation as the kick's most pugnacious performer. Law and order is maintained in soccer by the referee. Some violations result in a warning. Others dictate immediate expulsion. from the referee means you're out of the game. A yellow card is a warning, but two yellows equal one red, and it's goodbye. The kicks overcame an identity problem by combining the talents of an ad agency and the skillful use of various media to deliver their story to the public. They instituted a thorough grassroots campaign and hand carried their message into the streets, parks, and playgrounds. And you just want to keep your eyes open, keep your They did not maintain an aloof demeanor, but rather they sold their product on a person-to-person -person basis. Before the season ended, the entire upper Midwest had been exposed to a header. You get a lot of power that way.
The goalkeeper is a man alone. He is different from his teammates in more than just his uniform, for he is the only player who may touch the ball with his hands. He represents the final line of defense. Jeff Barnett was one of the first players signed by coach Freddie Goodwin. Barnett had played in London's Wembley Stadium before more than 100,000 fans in the English Cup Finals. He had the experience and maturity to direct a young developing defense. Barnett had a goals against average of 1.27 and shut out the opposition eight times. During the regular season, the kicks lost twice to Seattle. But in the playoffs, Barnett exacted revenge. He foiled Mike England on a penalty kick and sparked Minnesota to a three to nothing victory. The subject had become newsworthy and nationwide people were asking, why was Minnesota having a soccer affair? I came to the Minnesota kick soccer game because the players are so cute. The thing I like most about the kicks is their legs, their legs. I only came here to have a good time. I came for the tailgate parties, all right! I came out to the kicks game a couple of weeks ago and I really enjoyed it, so I thought I'd come out and see them again. My son, who is 21 years of age, loves the game. Our entire family is here tonight. We know nothing about the game. We've had a marvelous instruction. We're going in and thoroughly going to enjoy it. I like the kicks because the free parking is super. I think soccer's just terrific. I came to the Minnesota kicks game because my dad played soccer all his life in Holland and we want to see it again. The reason I came to a soccer game is because I've never been to one before. <laughs> we came to the kicks game this evening uh, so our daughter could see it. She's enrolled in the uh, Burnsville soccer system, and I think it's a good thing. I want to see Pele, too. Kicks is the greatest thing Minnesota's ever seen. Sell out crowd tonight. I came to the Kicks game because the price is right. I came to see the Minnesota Kicks, not to see Pele. I wanted to have some kicks, I wanted to party, and I wanted to see the phenomenal Pele. He has scored 1,246 goals. He played on three World Cup Championships for Brazil in 1958, 1962, and 1970. The superstar of soccer, number 10, Pelé. A record regular season crowd applauded Pelé's incredible skills. And Kicks chairman Jack Crocker paid him tribute. To Pelé. An outstanding, an outstanding athlete, athlete. And a, and a true, true gentleman, gentleman whose, whose personal, personal contribution, contribution to professional, professional soccer in the United States, States as well as a better understanding of all people everywhere has earned for you a special gratitude that will be perpetuated in the annals of time. For this, the fans of Minnesota say thank you, Bailey. I have to say thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Belay took advantage of Midwestern hospitality and assisted the Cosmos in a two-to-one victory. To British fans, George Best was famous for his feats on the field and infamous for his antics outside of soccer. A marvelously accomplished athlete, Best was lured from premature retirement by the Los Angeles Aztecs. was easily the best Los Angeles had to offer. And more than 42,000 Minnesotans realized they were watching a soccer legend. The Control Data Corporation, a worldwide firm headquartered in Bloomington, Minnesota, is happy and proud to assist in bringing you this first Minnesota Kicks highlight film. Control Data believes everyone should be proud of the talented, dedicated athletes who participate in the sports programs which make living in this area so enjoyable. Amateur or professional, champion or not, these athletes deserve the support and gratitude of our entire community. The public responds to an enlightened management, one not obsessed with a profit motive, became obvious in the turgent record attendance figures.
The affair was flourishing. The people were having fun, and they loved their kicks. It was Ron Webster on opening day who began an avalanche of Minnesota goals. Peter Bryan scored just one goal, but it was a big one in a two-to-one conquest of Portland. Alan West helped lift the kicks past San Jose with this goal in the playoffs. Mike Flater, number seven, a former All-American and U.S. Olympic soccer star, played well and scored 14 points before being sidelined by an injury. Alan West, a skilled dribbler, led the kicks with eight assists. This one went to Addy Coker. Coker, number 21, joined the kicks late in the year and was an immediate hit with the fans. In the playoffs, Coker led Minnesota in scoring. Perhaps the most popular of the kicks was the man whose name was difficult to pronounce and impossible to spell. Patrick Ace Nesolengue. Ace, number 11, played both midfield and forward. He was the kick's most accomplished dribbler and a constant scoring threat. Ron Butcher, number 18, was Minnesota's second leading scorer. had 14 goals and six assists for 34 points. Among his most memorable scores was a shorthanded goal against Toronto. Madcap melee tally in the playoffs against the Seattle Sounders. The top point producer for the kicks was a 19-year-old forward from England, number nine, Alan Willey. found many different ways to score his 16 goals. Each goal brought its own brand of excitement to the Met. Against the San Diego Jaws, Willie scored the first hat trick for the Minnesota kick. Perhaps the most poignant aspect of the kick's fantastic success was the post-game deportment of the players. They seemed eager and anxious to share their joy with their fans. This wholesome demonstration of appreciation was actually from the traditional American sports scene where fans are frequently unrequited lovers. Minnesota won everything except the championship, and that goal still remains. The kicks did capture the hearts of nearly 380,000 fans 
and together they found happiness in a soccer affair.